Happy New Year. Welcome to Vibrant Life episode 34. I'm Jessica Parker. I'm a holistic health coach with a master's in health psychology and a fitness instructor. Today is January 2nd, 2022. It is a chilly Sunday evening in Oregon. We're getting um, some more rain coming in. A little sad that our snow is gone, but it's not like when I lived in Alaska and people are used to that. <laughs> it kind of alters life a little bit for us here. So um, I guess it's good that we're going to move on a little bit. Maybe we'll have more later on. So today we're going to talk about fasting. So I teach keto for women in particular, and I have a group coming up uh, next Monday. But I have, I have people all the time ask me about fasting. Some people assume that you have to do some kind of fasting with keto, which you do not. Um, but I recently had a friend reach out and ask me, and that's something that I've been like thinking about. We need to chat about this. So we are specifically going to talk about intermittent fasting. So it's different than a long-term fast, which is like 24 hours plus. Intermittent fasting basically means like within a 24-hour window, you are stopping that eating um you have like your eating window and you have your fasting window and your eating window is getting smaller so within 24 hours you might decide i'm only going to eat within these like eight hours so it might be i don't eat until like 10 in the morning and then i'm done at 6 p.m or it might be smaller to where i don't eat until noon and then I, my, I've had my last meal at six. And so intermittent fasting is very purposeful in terms of I'm not eating anything after this time. There is a little bit of like nuancy stuff, which I won't really go into much today, but you know, some people argue, well, any calorie whatsoever in your system means you break your fast. Like in the morning, I have coffee with heavy whipping cream and some might argue that is breaking your fast and, and others might argue well it's not because you're still in that um, fat digest mode you're not eating carbs and it's if it's within like under a certain calorie allotment anyway blah 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 I'm not going to get into that I will just say that that's precisely what intermittent fasting means it's about you know, a very purposeful, I'm only allowing myself to eat for this many hours and it's going to be shorter than what's normal for me. And then I will expand on the like time in which I'm fasting. So obviously we all fast when we're sleeping, but you are just going to scooch those hours out a little bit on either end or on one end. So, um, I typically, for example, kind of intermittent fast on accident, maybe, I do not eat breakfast. I'm just not a breakfast person. I do have my coffee in the morning, but ever since I've gone keto, it's more than that. I typically don't even have anything to eat until after 12 o'clock. And you know, it really depends on what's going on with my body, hormones, if you know, I exercised the evening before, all sorts of things. So I, I really listen to my body. I don't typically do any purposeful thing in that aspect, but that's just me. And that's what I love about this also. You can use intermittent fasting totally to your benefit and in a way that works for you. Now, with that being said, I I personally, I tried intermittent fasting. Well, I tried doing some fasting years ago when I was in college um, and we were doing some fasting like for spiritual reasons. And it did not go very well. And what I didn't understand was, first of all, I was about all the carbs. Like it was me, me and carbs were like, had this tight relationship going on. So when you try to take yourself from being really um, tight with the glucose and the carbs, which is sugar within your body, and then you just stop it all together, your system doesn't know how to switch fuel sources to fat and ketones very easily. And you're going to be miserable. And I was. And not just miserable, but, you know, I couldn't think straight, um, didn't have any energy, felt like crap. And so I, I stopped. I felt horrible about it um, because I had to stop, but it just, I could tell it wasn't good for me. But fast forward to now to where my body knows, oh, you're not giving me any kind of like carb or fuel source at all, you know, if you're fasting. But um, 
no worries. I'm just going to dive into these stored fuel sources that I already have, which is the fat <laughs> within our bodies. You know, we all have some of that, but then um, also if your body runs out of glucose, you will start producing ketones and your body uses that for fuel. So I can go a long time without eating and it's not a problem. So um, I've mentioned recently that, you know, there are times when maybe I'm traveling or maybe it's just a super busy day or whatever. And I'm not able to just, you know, stop and go eat or have food with me or whatever, which I used to have to do because my blood sugar was all over the place. I had to have at least little bars or something with me. And now I don't have to do that and I'm fine. So it's a really nice place to be to where I don't feel like I'm going to freak out if I don't have something with me or I'm, you know, like going to have blood sugar issues. So let's talk about the benefits of intermittent fasting. We, in our standard American lifestyle with our standard American diet, which is super carby, and I want to say that I think people think sugar, but it's not just the sugar. You can like not eat sugar and still do all the carbs and fruits and like starchy veggies and all the things and still have high blood sugar because you are keeping the glucose high within your system. So we are used to constantly being in this digest mode constantly, you know, and with that comes the like blood sugar and therefore insulin. And so our bodies are always like, we got to take care of this. We got to take care of this. Like, Oh, she's putting more in our system, you know? And so there's very little opportunity to really not just rest, but then also clean up. So there's something called cellular autophagy, which means um, that you are allowing your cells to repair. So our cells naturally go through processes and die. And then there's the, that like um, die off basically. And that material needs to be cleaned up and the other cells will actually utilize that for fuel. But if we're constantly in this digest mode, constantly, you know, um, giving our bodies things that they have to work through and metabolize, then there's very little opportunity to do that cleanup. Therefore, we get a lot of inflammation within our bodies. So common, it's like the most common issue that we have and it causes a lot of chronic things such as autoimmune stuff, wh whether it be a gastrointestinal thing like Crohn's, whether you have rheumatoid arthritis, whether you have rosacea or lupus or a number of things. And even like Alzheimer's, hi puppy, um, you know, depression, anxiety, like there are so many different things that can occur. And um, high blood sugar is a problem with that, but also um, just having that, you know, not allowing your body to go through that cleanup process that it is designed to do. So by halting that consistent or constant digest mode and allowing not just the rest, but to go beyond that and start to do repair and cleanup, then you are giving your body a really good chance of doing some repair it needs to do, getting rid of that junk. I think of like a construction zone, which normally, you know, you have a construction team in there and they're working. And then I know like a good construction team will um, actually clean up their stuff, clean up the debris, clean up their tools at the end of the day. But the way we work, we just have a bad construction team and like our bodies are always constructing things, right? But our um, workers just, leave crap around and that is dangerous it's distracting it's not healthy it's you know so many wrong things with that and that's what we're doing beyond that um you can have experience mental clarity which you also experience with keto but it's essentially you know again going back to that cellular repair and um getting that cleanup going so then your body isn't like junked up with all the inflammation. It helps balance your hunger hormones. So our hunger hormones are leptin and ghrelin and they are responsible for basically the satiating feeling and then also that those cravings, those nagging cravings where I already had dinner, I already ate, I'm not hungry, but I really like need X, Y, or Z or whatever. It's that feeling of wanting to eat even if you're not hungry. That So whether you're like, oh, I still wanna eat or I, I feel good, I don't need that much. And so balancing those hormones 
um, intermittent fasting can really be helpful in that. Keto can as well. But um, again, you're just taking away that like crazy blood sugar, insulin cycle that happens on the standard American diet, but you're also getting rid of that inflammation or you're reducing it greatly. And so your body has a chance to actually feel the way it's supposed to feel. Um, and again, you do not have to do intermittent fasting with keto. And that's something that people wonder all the time. But I will say if you do keto first and then do in intermittent fasting, it's going to be much a much more pleasant experience. <laughs> Your body's already going to know what to do. So another thing is that it can help with sleep and it can help support the liver. So if you're eating a lot before bed and I'm a nighttime snacker, so I totally get this. It's, you know, once the day is done and you're tired and you've had a busy day and you just want to relax and something we naturally do as humans is gravitate toward the snacks, you know, because it does light up those receptors in our brains that make us happy and calm and just feel good and cozy and whatever and help us relax. But we can like kind of cross that line to where, okay, now I have too much in my system and then my body's going to be working at night. And if you are waking up during the night, you know, like maybe like between 2 and 4 a.m., it's it could be your liver. It could be that your liver is working hard to metabolize because that's kind of those are kind of the hours it tends to work hardest. So um, something to keep in mind is that if you're giving your body more of a break, before you get to bed so that a lot of that digestion has kind of happened and you're not giving it extra work to do as you're sleeping, then you can help the liver metabolize the things it already has to metabolize, which helps our sex hormones balance out, like our excess estrogen, like the liver is in charge of processing through that. Um, and it can really help your liver process through any extra glucose. So. Um, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is on the rise and it's no surprise because back to all the glucose, all the carbs. So if we're constantly, again, like inundating our system with all the glucose and constantly feeding it, whether it's actual sugar or just lots of carbs and fruit and all the things, then our liver is going to store this extra stuff and not be able to process it very well. Therefore, you have fatty liver disease. So those are some benefits. A few things that I want to say, though, in terms of, you know, just diving right in. I, I think that really, as with anything, if you know me very well, you'll know that I like to take a very individualized approach. So I mentioned before that I did some fasting um, with a group when I was in college, like eons ago, and my body did not respond very well because I was not in the situation to which my body could just easily go into fat burn mode, that's one thing, but I also was in a very heightened state of stress. If you have other areas of stress going on in your life, you do need to be careful because you already have like more stress hormones going on and fasting will create stress for your body. It is good, stress can be quite good, but to a certain level. And then it gets to be chronic to where too many stress hormones are are going out and then your body is going to have to compensate in some other way and you'll have some crap happen. We'll just say that. So I can tell, you know, when my body is not really in that place, you end up, um, you know, fasting, but your body can give you certain signs. Like maybe you feel a little like jittery or like that, that kind of caffeine high maybe to where you're like, oh, I do feel really clear, really like mentally clear and things like that, but I'm also feeling anxious. That's when you need to stop. That's when your body may like, may be, maybe it's had too much, maybe it's had enough, maybe it's not really in the place to where you need to do any like more fasting and your window maybe needs to be a little bit wider in terms of when you're eating and not press it too much. Um, if you have any kind of eating disorder, I would be super careful with this and perhaps not do it because people can really get into that control mode too much. And, um, you know, you, and if you're working with a therapist, talk to them about it. You know, it can help you in terms of, you know, balancing certain hormones that are like part of that cycle that you might be in, in terms of addiction, 
but if you go too far or just depending on where you're at in your journey, it can cause a lot of problems. So I would definitely caution against that. And I will say there was a time in my life when I couldn't have done it. Well, I did it and it was part of the, the bad part of the cycle. So definitely caution with that. Um, and then swinging, you know, some people just are, go from one extreme and you might even put this with what I just said, but not necessarily, not necessarily for eating disorders, but just in general, sometimes us humans tend to like really let that pendulum swing so much that we never really find a good balance. And we go from like, oh, I'm totally going to intermittent fast and blah, 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 and cut all this out of my diet and just be quote perfect and, and really feel deprived and then go off into the total opposite direction and gain all this weight. And if you're constantly doing those huge swings, you're basically going to give your body a really uphill battle to fight and you're going to do some damage to your metabolism and potentially your thyroid. So it might sound extreme to do some kind of fasting or whatever, but if you're in a really good place, like mentally, physically, all the things and with your diet to where you've already let go of some things and you're not feeling super deprived by that, then it might be a really good time for you to do this. And it's not going to feel like this huge swing, if that makes any sense. You know you, like that's where I always go back to, you know you. There's, there are things I can do now that I, even me, compared to myself 10 years ago, couldn't do and vice versa. So you know where you're at in your journey, you know what's appropriate for right now and what might be good and what might be harmful. And sometimes you have to try it a little bit and then peel back if you need to. So the last thing I will mention is the idea of homeostasis. And basically our bodies are freaking smart. And if we do too much of the same thing for too long, then our bodies really adjust. And then we're like, well, why isn't it working anymore? So if you're going to use some intermittent fasting, I would highly recommend kind of cycling through. So you're not just doing it constantly every day, every week, but you maybe pick, you know, a couple of days a week, or maybe you do it for like a week on a week off type of thing so that your body is always like, oh, now we're doing this because it's kind of like the thermostat, I guess, you know, um, within your house, it adjusts to a certain level and then the heat will kick on or off or the AC um, in terms of like wanting to keep that balance within your body. So that's why you may have heard me talk about calories before and I don't like to see people, but I see women mostly do this, but go super low on their calories and then they're like, you know, oh, awesome, I lost 10 pounds. That was so easy and they keep going and then pretty soon it's a lot harder even though they have plenty of weight still to lose and they don't understand and so well then I guess I'll eat less and I'll exercise more so I'll take in less calories I'll expend more and that works again for a minute but then it's harder well again our bodies are super smart and you're telling your body that it's starving and that it's in danger and so your metabolism is going to slow down through the process of slowing down your thyroid, which can actually take quite a long time to bounce back from, not to, you know, scare anybody, but it, it's just something to keep in mind that if you've done that, then you really do need to like be kind to yourself and kind to your body and nurture it back. And it, it might take a minute. Um, but that's why I really caution people all the time because I see that so often. I hope that helped. I really do think that intermittent fasting can be a really wonderful thing, especially in light of, you know, how we live now with our standard American lifestyle and just giving our bodies a chance to like process through all of that stuff and do the other things that are happening behind the scenes that we're never really aware of. I think that's a really wonderful thing, but just really be mindful of crossing over to that point where maybe it's not healthy for whatever reason, be very mindful of that. And then, you know, maybe dipping your toe on either side and going back and forth could be something that really works for you. That's what I do. And it works really well for me. My next Keto for Women group starts on January 10th, which is next Monday. And it is an online program. So you can be anywhere and participate. The beauty of that is that you get your login information for the program online and you can print off materials if you want. You can go through all of them or you can, you know, wait until we're doing it all as a group but we don't start within the group, which is a private Facebook group until January 10th. 
in there. I will go live. I will post things daily to help guide, help explain things, but also answer questions that come up within the group. You never have to log in at a certain time. I don't do that because we are very busy people. We have lots of different things going on, whether it's work or kids or whatnot, different schedules. So I just will go in there at some point during the day and you can log in at your convenience and catch up with whatever is going on. You can talk to me via the group. You can talk to me via the program. You can message me there and comment. So there are eight modules. There are eight different meal guides, which are um, basically a bunch of recipes, a bunch of ideas. I don't like people to be like married to a food plan because I want you to basically Get the tools that you need to have success beyond the eight weeks on your own. So I really like to teach how to test and track and understanding blood sugar versus ketones and understanding how stress plays into all of this and sleep and hormones and thyroid and adrenal stuff, all the things. And then we talk about, you know, how to deal with traveling and holidays and everything. I love the groups also because it's a place of real like community where people get to know each other and can cheer each other on and share things like recipes and where you find certain keto things, you know, at wet stores or whatever. Um, and also if you're struggling, that's a place to really talk it out. So if you're interested in joining or if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email is jess at healthwithjess.com. You can um, go down below and click onto the link and you can get more details on the program. You can also find me at thatvibrantlife.com, Facebook, That Vibrant Life, and then Instagram, that uh -huh. All right, guys. Hi. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Shoot this out, give a like to party. Listen up, yeah, it's time to start it.